<laughs> Thanks for joining us. Hello, welcome to On The Mic. My name is Mike. That there is Sam Mack, Hi. the world's greatest weatherman, cat lover, and he's sadly single. So today, it's not On The Mic. It's the Sam Mack dating show. Are you lonely? <laughs> Are you single? Are you unlucky in love? Well, so is this guy. Bumble didn't work. Or any of those weird dating apps? Well, you've come to the right place. Just make the comment down the bottom. Or maybe you've got a friend or family member who you would like to introduce to this young man. You are still single, aren't you? I am still single. I didn't realise this was a roast no, show. I it's thought not. we were mates, Mike. It's not. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Mack. Great to see you. Thank you for having me. Look at this. A couple of beers. Yeah. Blokes, on the blokes having beers. I'm so excited to have you here. Been trying to get you on the show for ages. Uh, I, I just think that you're doing such a brilliant job Thank on you, Sunrise mate. being the weatherman and traveling all over Australia. Yeah. Australia absolutely love you. Everywhere you go, people Have are Have you done a survey? Have you people, done some research people, into well, that? I, I watched the show yeah. and I watch your Instagram because it's so entertaining. You're, you're playing songs to your cat. I think <laughs> I, I always love yeah. you the other day. I mean, day. some say entertaining, some say sad, but yeah, that, thank you. And and like there's people coming up to you during your weather reports and little kids have drawn your pictures that you're sticking yeah, on your fridge. I love that. Like, mums are making you pairs of shorts. And Nana's are knitting with, me things. With, with your cat yeah, on it. Yeah. It's, are you in Enjoying it? It must I be having a blast. It is weird. Like to go to somewhere, for example, last week we're in a chuka and I've never been to a chuka in my life and I go to a chuka. That chuker, sounds like an indigestion problem. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Um, but we were fine. We had a, a nice meal at a Greek restaurant there. I can't remember the name of it. But um, these people that live on this completely foreign space that I've never visited who know all these things about you because I forget, I'm sure you're the same. Sometimes you just say things on a show, mm. in a podcast, on a TV thing, on a radio thing. And you forget that people actually remember it. Yeah. So people come up and they want to talk in detail about, you know, how one of your cat has issues with its size and it's mm. a plus size model and it's also blind or how the other one only has one tooth and suffers from a very serious mm. condition known as RBF, resting bitch face. Yeah. But they want to talk about this stuff and I forget that they know all this stuff. <laughs> I thought that was your cat's name, resting bitch face. Because I'm, I'm a friend of mine, friend of ours, Sammy Power, she loves cats as well. Yeah. And, uh, and, and she's the one who first got me on your Instagram and said, look at all yeah. the stuff this guy's doing. Oh, his cat cracks me up. <laughs> uh, she told me your cat's name was RBF. I'm like, what does that stand for? <laughs> Resting bitch face. But it's Coco. It's Coco. And um, I can tell you some very exciting news about Coco. Oh. Coco will be featuring in the next couple of weeks on a magazine called Puss Week. <laughs> which is an actual magazine written by cats for cats. So the, the types of um, topics they cover in Puss Week are things like, um, you know, plastic bags, can we trust them? Or the little red dot, is it worth chasing it? Or my owner rubbed me on my tummy inappropriately, who do I tell? So <laughs> who it's, comes it's up with this? This amazing lady named Bexy. Yeah. And um, so Coco will be the first ever Australian cover cat of no. Puss Week magazine coming up in the next couple of weeks. That's I'm a, incredible. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a huge stage dad. I'm kind of yeah, really? like Demir Dokic without the dodgy stuff. Yeah, so you, you, you're very loving. Do you put her through any training? Does she do any, well, any photo shoots beforehand? It's a it's a reward process. So if she poses hilariously in a Santa costume, she gets some raw chicken. And that I think that's a fair deal. That's like show business. How do you know when she's happy? Because your cat always looks sad. And your cat's got, incidentally, has got its own Instagram account. Yes, uh, Life of Miss Coco. She's yeah. approaching 7,000 followers. Oh. Um, I know she's happy when she's purring. And that's, the, that's how you can tell a cat's happy. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Is it uh, is it weird for you traveling around Australia and people coming up to you and knowing all this stuff about you? <laughs> it is a little bit weird. I, I find it, um, at first I find it a bit confronting, but then once I get chatting to people, it's actually quite nice that mm. they take an interest mm. and they remember all these things. You know, um, like you said, little kids who draw pictures of the cats and a little kid drew me the other day, but I had no hands. I don't, I don't know why. Like, I was a little bit alarmed about that. So, do you, not, do you not use your hands when you're presenting? Do maybe, you, like, maybe there's normally can... a microphone attached, attached to it. And she couldn't... Microphones are difficult to draw for yeah. a six-year-old. But Yeah, probably. I'm not going to bother with the microphone. Just going to draw the guy with no hands. Yeah. Fair um, enough. It, so, what I'm saying is it, it wasn't good enough to make the fridge. So, mm. you know, kids need to work hard and they need to be talented if they're going to make my fridge. Does it ever go wrong when you're out there? Because I, I know <laughs> what, it, what it's like, you know, when you've got to get a crowd together mm. and you're about to do a Cross, yeah. and you think they're going to say the right thing and they just don't like or, or, or there's that well-known clip where a lady goes to speak to a little kid and he just keeps saying i love turtles i love that clip. i love turtles how good is that clip? So does that ever happen to you yeah all the time um kids are often very chatty off the air but it's mm. something about the energy and the lights and the you know the fact that it's live where mm. they will literally say nothing so mm. i often will just sort of say you know oh and you know what's your favorite thing about living in a chuka and they just freeze up and i go <laughs> his answer is that good we're going to hear it after you <laughs> weather. 
<laughs> and that's the great thing about my yeah. role is yeah. that if something goes really bad or if we need a breather or time to reset something up, yeah. you can just throw to the weather uh, and then read the weather. And while that's happening, I've got a great producer, the human emoji, Sean Flynn, oh, who looks yeah. like an emoji. I've seen him. He drives you around that He does. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. I, I think I saw you doing He's more a than a chauffeur. Like, he was he, overtaking someone and, yeah. and you were saying, go, go, do it now. Did yeah, that feel good? Like, right. you, you give him a bit of stick. <laughs> oh, well, you have to. You know, we spend about 50 or 60 hours a week together. Yeah. So you have to have that sort of, you've got to make it you fun. You've got to get up pretty early too. Like Grant Daniel like did it for many years. Yeah. And he ha- hated the hours and, and had to get out of it. And a lot of other weathermen go, this is a joke. I'm going, because you, you've got to get up earlier than everyone else because you're going to, so far out to these country towns. Oh, absolutely. I kind of trick myself and just say that I'm doing a late night show, like just a really late night show. <laughs> really, I, really. You know, so get you up stay at about awake four, all night. Yeah, yeah sometimes. Just if you watch the it. show, you can tell. Um, but yeah, first cross is at about 5.30 and then every half an hour we do a cross. But um, you, you said really nice things about me at the start of the show. Thank you. I know you edit that bit out. But um, I wanted to say that I love watching you yeah. on Big Brother Up Late. Oh, stop it. No, honestly. Really? I, it was one of my favourite things to watch because I there was something about watching that show, and I'm sure a lot of your you know followers would, would have watched it. Mm. There was an unpredictability about it and there was an energy mm. which I often find that I get myself in these situations that's the most exhilarating yeah. exciting stuff to make because yeah. so much of TV and radio so is, prepared yeah and it's and it's like a script and then you throw to this and you've only got 12 seconds here mm. but that show I used to love sometimes I could tell that you were really like what am I going to do here? And I could tell, Had but nothing. you'd get through it. And yeah. like, I remember watching one night, I think you ordered a pizza into the studio <laughs> and it was like, what time will he arrive? Will he be here within half an hour? They always say they will. And I just loved it. So thank you for keeping me very entertained for a number of years but, on the show. Dude, you say that, but thank you for, for making something live look so exciting. And, and you, you hit the nail on the head there. And I think that's what TV's missing and where, you know, the internet and a lot of live stuff that mm. we're seeing on uh, on web shows is, is so exciting because, like, you, you just don't see the unpredictability. Yes. And, and I think if if the major networks need to save their asses, they need to put more people on TV that are going to do stuff that's not predictable, yeah. stuff that's a little bit random, stuff that they're going to let things stuff up. Yeah. Because when things stuff up, people talk about it. Totally. They, they'll go to work the next day and go, oh, did you see the show last night where he, yes. he you know, he smashed the whole set by accident yes, or the set. I, I mean, agree. Greg Kennedy used to do it all the time. I, to- I 100% agree. And I'm trying to do bits of that yeah. where possible. But obviously, you know, we've got time restraints and, you know, yeah. certain parameters. But uh, I think that there needs to be more of that. And mm. I think a lot of it is just down to risk taking. Yeah. Being willing to, yeah. you know, put the, the microphone near a kid and you don't know what they're going to say. Yeah. Or yeah. chat. We had one the other day where I was chatting to one person in July. Long, mm. And this guy who I hadn't met yet started shouting something out in the background. And I could tell that he was, you know, a pretty wild dude. And I had to make that split second decision. Do I just go hello and keep going or do I put the mic? And I put the mic over there yeah. and he said, I got married in this park. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. What's your name? He's like, Stefan. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, good to meet you, Stefan. And he's like, and he's just kind of like, clearly he'd been drinking for yeah. about seven days, but that's all right. You know, and I said, and I had that moment where I, I could easily have just moved on. Mm. But I thought... I think Australia deserves to know more about Stefan. And, and I'm like, Stefan, are you still married? Like, no, nah, I'm not with that lady anymore, <laughs> but I'm looking for a new lady. And I'm like, this is great. That's the best stuff. This is so they good. They need more of that. And you've just got to be willing to take those risks and know that it could fail dismally, mm. but often the failure is the funniest part. Yeah. Do you, do you ever have any of the uh, the bosses, you probably can't say this anyway, saying, oh, be really careful. Like, please don't, <laughs> don't speak to too many kids or don't do this. Or do you have a lot of... Not yet. Police? Like, I, honestly, credit to them. They've mm. been really supportive and rarely will they say, don't do that. I think because more often than not, we're mm. getting good stuff from people. I yeah. think... I think people um, have so many great stories. Like mm. Andrew Denton used to do that show where, you know, Enough Rope, and then he did the version where it was like normal Australians. And there were amazing yeah. stories. I think, honestly, there's so many cool things that you can learn from just putting a microphone near someone mm. and not scripting it and not yeah. over prepping them, just yeah. letting them be themselves and mm. not. Because I think if you, if you try to prep it too much mm. then they overthink it and they don't deliver a natural you know del- they don't perform naturally whereas mm. if you kind of go randomly oh hello mate how mm. are you then you're going to get like they're not going to have time to overthink mm. it so I'm a big fan of that doesn't always work obviously but if it doesn't work then it's your job to kind of get out of it or you know, I would I would always have people saying oh Mike what are you going to say or you yeah. know because they, they think that the, me looking like I'm going to be unpredictable and not knowing what I'm going to do is what's really going on I actually am quite calculated with, yeah. with knowing which direction 
direction I'm going to take yes. something or if someone carries on like an idiot, I put on the microphone, I'll say something funny and walk off. But some some people who just don't work in that world, they absolutely freak out. Because, they do. And especially in this day and age because, because you know, sponsorship's sort of dying a little yep. bit in, in the free-to-air TV and, and so many traditional media spaces. And they're doing the different things like digital media and, and that that's increasing. So mm. you've got to be careful. But, mate, it, it's great. Keep up keep up the good work Thank and you. keep doing it. And, Thanks, Mike. And so it's, it's your first time being a weatherman. It is. So how are you handling the weather and, and all the terminology and stuff? Because when I was uh, got my first start in radio yeah. when I was about 16, I was working mm. in 2RE Tari. Were you? And I had to go out to the weather station every day and check check the barometric <laughs> pressure and I had to look at the clouds and match them up with photos. What was this, the chart. 1930s? Pretty much. <laughs> and I, had, I had to type it into a computer. And really? Had, and outside and I had to go to go to the weather station and then, you know, they'd, wow. they'd print out the... So you were a real you know, weatherman. I was a real weather. But that was while you would, I was doing a, a late show. Like every announcer at Coastal Radio 2RE had to do that as a part of their I shift. See. They had to go out and update the weather Good station. Good grounding. And I'd forget. And if you didn't do it, you'd get in trouble off the boss. But one day I, I, I locked myself out of the station <laughs> and I, like I had a, a long song playing. I can't remember what it was in November rain or something like that. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I'm like, how am I going to get back in? I couldn't get back into the station, tried to climb in windows. I had to smash the window to get, <laughs> Are you serious? To get in and get back on air. Luckily, I got there before the song finished. And I told my boss, he goes, why didn't you just let dead air happen until... <laughs> you know, we got some on there I'm like yeah fair enough probably didn't have to do but that it was I get the country. that though because yeah. growing up you have this thing that dead air is worse than yeah. anything in your life it's and worst I used feeling. to have nightmares about it because I used to panel as well in radio I'd panel yeah. the desk and I used to have this um, reoccurring nightmare where um so I was panelling the show. This is while I was living in Perth and working at 92.9. Yeah. And I would go to push, like, you know, to start a song or to start an ad break or something. We'd finish our chat. And the button would start moving, right? right. And you couldn't push And then I'm, like, trying to go button. like that. And then everyone runs to the studio, which is what happens when things go off the air yeah. or when something happens. Everyone runs to the studio. And they're all like, push the button, Sam. Push the button, Come Sam. On. And I'm, like, trying to find this button that I'm never going to get. And I used to have that same nightmare yeah. at least once every couple of weeks. I have the nightmare where the song's running out. Yes. And, and, and I'm falling asleep. But when I go home and I'm actually sleeping... <laughs> I, I'm dreaming that, that the song's been, I keep waking up I'm like, where's the button? Oh, I'm in bed. And then I get back to sleep. Did you ever have any uh, moments where you fell asleep on air when you were doing uh, a radio show? Because I, I worked on Midnight to Dawn. And I found that, oh, did you? that really hard at Today FM in Sydney. I did that a couple of times, but never like yeah. as a regular gig. Once I- they had a, a survey party and I thought, I'll just have a few beers. <laughs> yeah. You know how when you don't have enough beers to party, but you yeah. just have a couple and then you're tired within an oh, hour. Oh, it hits you hard, yeah. I, I fell asleep at, at like four o'clock in the morning. So what did you wake up to? I, I, I woke up to dead air. Oh. And, and all I did is just started pushing all the buttons <laughs> and, and the hotline was ringing <laughs> And it was a girl from promotions and she goes, what, there's nothing on air. And I go, oh, there's something on air. What are you talking about? <laughs> She's like, did you fall asleep? I'm like, no. I was, I was, I'm wide awake. It's, it, the song's just started. Do you know how long you were? It, they had dead air for? I was, I was too scared to check. But, <laughs> but um, years later, uh, one of the announcers that was there, I think his name was... Uh, it was Rob McCasker. Yeah, I know. And Rob, he yeah. he said, oh, "It's all right, mate. We we deleted the dead air off the uh, the oh, logger, so you wouldn't nice, get in trouble." Nice, you didn't tell that's me. cool. That that's lovely. Cool. I had one where um, this was while I was in Adelaide, and I was working during the daytime, doing like daytime announcing. That's how I sort of started out. And for some reason, I'm not normally someone who goes out during the week, but I had this big Thursday night, and I wasn't supposed to be on air till like one or two p.m. the next day, mm. and. Um, woke up to like seven missed calls and banging on my door because they needed me to fill in on the breakfast show, right? This is starting at sort of 5, 6 a.m. I got home at about 3.30, had a massive night, was in no state to do it. And the only way that they knew to come to my house was because one of the assistant producers was a mate of mine. He's like, I'll go get him. I'll go to his house. I know where he lives. It's five minutes away. He's like, you've got to come on in the air. You know, they need you to fill in. And I'm like, oh, I can't do it. I'm, I'm really not in a good way. To, I should <laughs> not, not be near a microphone. Yeah. And they're like, mate, get in the car. I'm getting you some water and some mints. You're and doing this show. <laughs> and he you had to do me it. In there. And I said to the guys, the hosts on the show, I said, guys, just so you know, I had a really big night. Um, I'm just going to try to stay out of the way and just push the buttons. Did the show. Somehow got through it. As I'm leaving, um, Craig Bruce, a big boss, yeah, no, who yeah. happened to be based in Adelaide at the Craig, time, yeah. he and I thought I'd you know got away with it. I'm sneaking out. He's like, "Hey Sam, have you got a second? I'm like, "Oh, oh don't you hate that when a program manager yeah. says that?" So I go. They into want to go office. through an air check yeah. or something, and he's like. Mate, I just got to say, your energy today was spot on. You absolutely nailed it, mate. That's exactly what we needed in the Brecky Show. Well done. Terrific job. Have an awesome day. (laughs) 
But why didn't you say that across the room instead of pulling a power <laughs> yeah, play yeah. and making your little sphincter go like yeah. this? Why do program managers of radio stations I think do it's, that? It's something that was big in the nineties that has sort of you know lingered that, around. Surely it doesn't happen anymore, does it? Well, not in TV for me yeah. anyway. But I guess They're the, a lot the nicer po- and, and less and less insular yeah. and, and, and open I, space, open plan I, these I, days. I found when I was uh, going from a radio to working in TV. Like radio people, we go out and all they do is talk about radio. Yes, TV people, we hang out with them and they're like, I don't talk about TV. (laughs) Yeah, I agree with that. Care about it. I met a lot of people who could only talk about radio. But just back to that story. The moral of the story is, it's good to get drunk during the week, and and, you know, it's turned out great. Everything's fine. Double day. Don't drink responsibly. (laughs) Hey, um, I've good. Don't do not do. (laughs) I mean, definitely. Hey, uh, I uh, I got a little quiz for you because you know you're a weatherman sure. and and I, I thought well why don't we play a weather game Yeah, great. So I invented a weather game. Wow, you put so much work into this show. I, I did. There was so much preparation. Actually, I got a guy in the Philippines. It's amazing. <laughs> it's five bucks on five Well, awesome. they've had some tough weather there. Poor guy. That's <laughs> no, a bit too close to home they for have, him, haven't they? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so this game I'd like to call weather or not. Oh, that's a good pun. Yeah. Thank you. I always used to muck up the spelling with weather. I don't know whether I'll go to the beach and what's the weather today. Anyway, that's another It's story. interesting you say that because I've often thought if I write a book about my adventures as a TV weatherman, mm. um, the, the working title was going to be Weather, You Like It or Not. Oh. So, you know, we're basically sad Spelt pun wrong. enthusiasts hanging out. So the way this works is I, I'll tell you a word because uh-huh. uh, I Googled some, some weather words. Right. And, and, and you've got to say, that's weather. And if it's not, you just say it's not. Oh, okay, great. so, we'll do so a little, it's a good game for people to play along at home. A little, yeah, play along at home as well. And you can practice this for the little first one. Okay, here we go. So I'd say uh, precipitation, weather, perspiration, weather. No, oh, per- but, sweating. But it's weather affected, isn't it? Like you sweat when it's hot or no, it's but muggy. It's weather affected. It's not weather. <laughs> but that's all right. That was just a practice run. I hated the practice that run. Was, the practice run is fine. Now I'm doubting we, everything I've ever learned we about can, weather. We can, we can edit that out. <laughs> Trust me, it gets easier. All right. Cloudless. Weather. Yeah. Clueless. Are they people complaining about the show? Yeah, Those I messages know. coming through? I think they are. Just put that on Someone's silent. message. <laughs> uh, dog days. Not weather. Oh, that's weather. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I Googled it, and apparently that's the name given to very hot summer. Oh, very right. Very hot summer days. Well, I know in a row. Song, it's more dog, an American Dog thing. days are over. Uh, Florence and the Machine. Yeah. It's about weather. Yeah. I've listened to that song a million times. Didn't know it was about weather. What sort of a weather man am I? <laughs> Tornado. <laughs> weather. Drizzle. Weather. Nizzle. It's just, it's just a word I Not made Not weather. Up. Uh, yeah. Snoop Dizzle. <laughs> Not weather. Parched. Not weather. Yeah. P- patchy. Weather. Hey! El Nino. Weather. La Nina. <sighs> Not weather. <laughs> Is it? La Nina happens when a change in a weather pattern <gasps> makes the weather colder than it normally would be around... The world. Oh, I don't talk in detail There's about that. So El- people just want to know that it's 32 in Darwin. <laughs> El Nino and La-, La Nina. Arid. Oh, it's arid. Not oh, arid. I feel you're like- trying to trick me now. No, 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 no. Um, weather. Yes. Arab. Not weather. Wizard. Not weather. <laughs> Blizzard. Weather. <laughs> Space Jam. Great movie. That, well, it's a new one with LeBron James. Yeah. You know, he's the Bugs and Michael, Michael Jordan back in the day. Mm. Not weather. No. Ice Jam. <laughs> um, sounds like a wild night out in the cross, but I'm going to say not weather. Oh, it's a thing. It's a weather thing. It's, it's ice jam is an uh, accumulation of broken river ice caught in a narrow channel, frequently producing local flooding. Oh, well, I've been but, doing the job two and a half years. I haven't encountered an ice jam yet. So look, ho- hopefully one day. Jam, not weather. Yeah, it goes on toast <laughs> usually. Moist weather. Is it? <laughs> this is the promo, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> is it moist. <laughs> You, hang on. The whole idea of this whole show was so you could say moist to me and look at me weirdly. Well, maybe. <laughs> no, moist. Moist. Yeah, moist conditions. Do weather. You, do you say that? I actually say it. Mm. And um, people giggle when I say it. And I'm like, guys, I'm a serious weather presenter. Please <laughs> have some decorum. Because moist wasn't in any of the lists, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I've heard you say moist on Sunrise before. I have said I was moist. feeling quite moist today. Yeah, absolutely. We'll say moist conditions in Toowoomba. Mm. Um Deviants like yourself might take it down another path. But, but when you when you describe moist conditions, do, do you mean that it's like, I feel like it's balmy or kind clammy? Of, yeah, I would say closer to a muggy sort of sensation where there's a bit of a moisture in the air and a bit of, you know, you're sweating quite a bit. Moisture in your plums. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moisture. Weather. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and last but not least, this, this was the hardest one, but I think it's pretty obvious. Um, psychrometer. 
Psychrometer, was it? Yeah. I'm going to say weather. Yes. A psychrometer yes. is an instrument used to measure water vapor, water vapor uh, content of the atmosphere. Let exactly. me say that again. A yes. psychrometer is an instrument used to measure water vapor content of the atmosphere. Um, you probably used one in Tari. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. little stick. There you go. I used to use it for my drinks as well. Um, I love that game. Yeah, did good. I pass the game? Yeah, I, mate, you passed it with flying colours. Oh, good. You can keep your job at Channel <laughs> 7 as the weatherman. <laughs> and what, what, from weatherman, is there any future aspirations to go anywhere else? Like, what's the next big thing? Because you used to sort of have a bit of a Tonight Show with John Foreman that I came on once I years did. ago. And yeah. That was so much fun. Such yeah, cool that was the first time we met. Yeah. Yeah, and that was, it was called The Big Night In, and I was, I guess, the sidekick for John Foreman. And it was only one season, but I really enjoyed that. Lovely guy, John Foreman. Uh, I... I love the Tonight Show feel. I love, like, I grew up watching shows like Conan O'Brien, yeah. David Letterman, um, these days, you know, Jimmy Fallon. I do love Tonight Shows. Uh, I don't know if Australia can have one at the moment on Why? commercial TV. It's well, bullshit. Yeah, I know. We should. And I, I agree. It's I'd not love hard it. to do. But I think the reason, and this is the reason that I've heard from, you know, when I've talked to people about it, is not enough high profile celebrities to you know get to, people to have watch. the tune in factor but what about when rove was doing it i mean he had some it high was profile great but it was but once a week many. it was once a but week uh, he would he would have do all sorts of fun stuff yeah. with people out on the street he'd say okay we're in this suburb everyone flick your light yes. on and off and, and it was everyone awesome i would love that i stuff. think that I th uh, now my point was about a nightly show i wasn't talking about a weekly show because yeah, that was okay. weekly i think there's yeah, a big weekly difference okay. in australia yeah i think yeah. we could definitely do it. well there's talk but of, if um, we could do it with steve visard that was every night yes and, and then i think uh, it was graham kennedy tonight live with to steve visard and then but there was less less other media around everywhere saturday night takeaway um dr chris brown julia morris i believe they're doing that oh, uh which cool. is a show that they've done in the uk with anton dex yeah, the guy who, right, who do all okay, the shows yeah, over yeah. there so i think i think maybe this is the year there might be some of that you know that live variety. That's what we want. But you'd you'd want to do something like I'd that. I'd love if you to could. do that. Yeah. I mean, the most recent thing I did was get my clothes off for charity. Oh, um, oh that was cool. Yeah, the real yeah, full Monty. What, what was that like for you? The real full Monty. It was terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. So we, me and um, seven other guys, um, over the course of six weeks, learned a dance routine slash strip routine with um, Todd McKenney mm. doing the choreography, and then we performed in front of a thousand people at the Enmore Theatre. Mm. And we literally took everything off. So people saw your wang? Everything, yeah. No way. So they weren't allowed to take mobile phones in there. Um, did but you they warm did... it up a little bit? Yeah, well, I, well this is the it? discussion point. Um, who was it? Matt Cooper, NRL, um, former NRL player, Matt Cooper, had, gave me some strategic advice about mm. that. And he said, look, you know, just, just gently wake it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were and the words he used. I did, but then what happened was mm. I was so scared about screwing up the choreography or Corey as we now call it because Todd McKenney was so strict with us and he really read us the right act. He's like, guys, if you screw this up, this is my name to your choreography. I've had a long career in theatre and music and dance. Don't you screw this up. So... When, I, when you think about Todd getting angry at you, that doesn't help down there. So, if he's screaming so, at you from behind, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to shrivel up. <laughs> Todd was awesome. He was great fun to work with, but that didn't help in that department. But the good thing for me was... I was next to Chris Smith, so no one was looking at me. Oh. It was like Chris yeah. Smith's taking his clothes oh, were you in off. The Who's show? the weird weather dude next to him? Yeah. <laughs> did you, did you uh, do a little side glance? Yeah. Oh, geez. No, did, I had the same who, same who philosophy. The biggest, <laughs> what I'm getting at. Um, well, Shane Jacobson was the biggest personality oh, of the group. That's I what presume I mean. that's what you meant. Yeah. Um, I had the same approach as bungee jumping. Whatever you do, don't look down. And that was that was something that I committed to for the entire filming of the show, rehearsals, and then even the performance. Jonesy from Jonesy and Amanda has no ass, and he's a terrible dancer, but Most a lovely guy. Have, <laughs> Most men have no ass, though. Oh, I pride myself on it. So I actually got a full-time butt coach leading into it. My friend oh. Karina, who- Oh, you said so you worked on it. So yeah. You, you actually built up your butt muscles. Yeah. She told me what foods to eat and what sort of exercises to do. And um, it was kind of a journey. I went from um, pancake to peach over the course of six weeks. And I'm really proud of my curves, Can we, can we can you see your bum now? <laughs> can you stand up and give us a look? Give us a Which little- Which camera? Hey, uh, just turn around. Look. My anaconda don't. My anaconda don't. Is that the promo now? Can, can, can you do the, uh, what do you call it, when you twerk? I'm not doing it. It's very expensive if you want the full routine. <laughs> All the guests do it. What's your problem? <laughs> um, I don't understand why I you don't have you a, a girlfriend. That's ridiculous. Tell me about With an ass like that. <laughs> See how I changed the subject. Tell me about Kamil Tovich. 
Oh, Hilda Kamaltovic. Yeah. She's a, uh, a a Russian personal trainer yeah. here in Bondi, and she has her own Instagram, uh, at Kamaltovic. I'm a fan. And, uh, yeah, she, she saw that uh, you were messaging her, and uh, and I think she sent you a few abusive messages back because that's the way she speaks when she loves someone. She just Oh, I misunderstood them. that tone then. I thought yeah, it was no, she thought, just she um, passion, great. what she was writing to now, me. That, that's her way of saying, please let me train you. Oh, right. Well, so, uh, what's her Instagram account if people want to follow her? At Kamaltovic. Yeah. Um, I had an idea for her, Mm -hmm. um, if you want to pass it on. Um, What about, you know how you've got Movember? What about Camel Tovember? Oh, that could work really well. So it's a big promotional month where you you get your camel toes out and um, just to raise awareness about um, whatever charity or camel toes, um, if she's interested, she can use that. It could be uh, a a lot of different things around that region. There's different different problems that people have that we could raise money for. Yeah, or just promotion for Lycra pants. It could be (laughs) anything. Or just getting waxed. Well, you'll probably get one of those waxing companies or laser companies to sponsor. All right, I well. showed you my curves, Chelsea Cameltoe. Wait, you really want to see it? Yeah. Australia wants to see it. <laughs> that much of a camel toe. That's pretty embarrassing. It's, it's, it wasn't in the right position to give good camel toe. Are you saying that wasn't a flattering angle you know, for your camel toe, Mike? I'm, I'm going to edit that in later and sort of make it look a little bit better. So you think it's me. Uh, well, since we're uh, talking about like Instagram and, and yeah. crazy stuff online, what about your crazy stuff online with uh, with dating? You, do you get into Bumble or, no, or I, any of the Tinder or I've anything never, like that? Or? This surprises people. I've never used any form of dating app. Honestly, I just, um, something about it, like I've watched friends do it and I've operated it for friends, you know, for for lols, but Mm. I've never actually set up an account. I have featured on at least five people's accounts though, that people who've had photos with me have then, you know, said they're using me as swipe bait Mm. and having not much success. I'm like, well, don't use me and don't blame me. But Mm. I really feel that I want to meet someone either, you know, the old fashioned way, Facebook Mm -hmm. or, um, Instagram or, or Twitter well, or Instagram real life is like, IRL. Instagram is like a in real life. Don't be ridiculous. Who would do that? That's disgusting. I'm going to have to cut that out as well. Yeah. Now, Instagram is a way a lot of people meet, yes. meet people. It's like, hey, how are you doing? Exactly. You know why? I feel that it's less threatening and l- there's less pressure attached to it and it's less creepy. It's mm. a bit more, you know, I chat to a lot of guys and girls on Instagram, direct messages that there's no intention of any dating. I mean, we yeah. chat on um, direct message on Instagram, but mm. I don't have any intention of dating you. Really? No. Well, I guess that's all we've got time for. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for being on the show. So what kind of a girl are you looking for? How good's the studio audience? Any, any <laughs> just a girl? <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe you should try gay. No. Why not? Um, just not attracted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair like uh, a lot of my best mates mm. are gay and I love hearing about their lives and they're yeah. very happy, but not personally my vibe. Mm. Um, fair enough. Glad we straightened that out. <laughs> Did you ask me a question? Yeah. What kind of girl are you oh, after? Um, funny is crucial for yeah. me. Warm, as in warm personality. That's not a weather term. Warm. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to. Because my girlfriend has a warm body. In summer, <laughs> really? like, stay on your side of the bed. Winter, come here. Oh, really? It's a good yeah, thing. I, I look for that. I would love that. Not with your girlfriend, mm. but. Um, <laughs> maybe Camel Tolbridge. <laughs> Is she single? <laughs> yes, she is. Very. Oh, right. Very. She's having a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder why. It's making her more angry. Well, that's going to change in Camel Tovember. So, yes. And so, uh, so you want her to be single, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would help. I think, um, yeah, someone who's funny, warm, non-smoker, um, animal lover, mm. um, someone who just is relaxed. Mm. Because I find that sometimes people are so highly strung and like they look for drama. And this, like this couple of, you know, past relationships, things like that, I've found that there's just this kind of search for drama and trying to create drama that doesn't Do you think they actually there. enjoy it a little bit, but they make yeah. out they don't, but they really do. I That's why know. they keep looking for it. I don't know. Maybe it's just like a checklist. They're like, okay, yeah. well, I've, I've eaten breakfast. I've gone for my run. Oh, I haven't had any drama yet. And it's almost midday. Mm. Excuse me. Do you think maybe Sydney people are more dramatic? Um... Yeah, yeah. I think mm. there's a bit more of a buzz to Sydney people. Like mm. Sydney people kind of have to be somewhere 10 minutes ago yeah. a lot of the time, so that adds to it. And Sydney people... Grass is greener kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So I think... That- I never had any luck dating people in Sydney. Really? Never. Where did you find your lovely lady? Uh, I found her in Brisbane. Yeah, right. Downtown Brisbane. So tell me the story. How did it How did it happen? Uh, it was actually in an acting class. Yeah. Yeah. Were and, you a student or a teacher? Uh, I was a student. It's more, a, not necessarily a class. It's like a workshop where, yeah. where actors get up cool. and they, they, they work different scripts and stuff like that. And, and we started hanging out. And I didn't actually 
think that she liked me at all. I'm like that as well. I, I have no idea when we someone friends. likes me. Yeah. And because um, she's way too hot for me. And <laughs> that's how I feel and all the time. And too young, I think this is ridiculous. And and she had a part-time job as most uh, act, actors, actresses yeah. do. And uh, she was a dental nurse. Cool. And she, she said, uh, I think we we're in conversation, she said, do you know, I'm... Just wish I could find a job where I didn't have to suck spit all day. And, and I said, I wish you'd suck my spit. And she grabbed me and kissed me. And I'm like, oh, this is happening. Wow. That's what I look <laughs> That's like. That's one of the great pickup lines. I've never heard that as a pickup line before. That's absolutely, you can suck my spit. You should get promotional yeah. t-shirts made with that. That's a winner. I, I think I thought it was. So if anyone uh, knows someone that he has just described, maybe you could just put their name in the comments box down the bottom. Yeah. And uh, and maybe we can set something up. That'd be great. Mm. I mean, the other side of that is when, I don't know if you've ever had this, where, mm. where you're in a relationship or you're kind of early days of a relationship and someone, they say to you that they love you, but you aren't quite there yet. Have you ever been in that situation where someone said, I love you, but you didn't really feel it enough to recipro? Short for reciprocate. Uh, you know, I would have probably just said I love you because... Oh, so you, you know, just I, say even if you don't I, mean it. I, yeah, I would. Yeah, okay, I, I would so just just because I would go. Oh, yeah, I love you too. You're a nice and guy because I think you could say I love you to people, but it'll mean different things. Like I love you. I think you're a great guy. I love you. She's, oh, of course I love you. You're a beautiful girl. I love hanging out with you. I love <laughs> making love to you. Oh. And, and and then and then later on when shit gets real, then when you say I love you, it actually really means something. My mum was always really oh. big. I'd never tell them you love them. She really, say, please just promise me one thing. Even when I start dating girl. Please don't tell them that you love them. I said, I already yeah. did that on the internet and I haven't met her yet. You know, my, my <laughs> voice is, oh, I, I just can't help myself. Wow. I get so caught up in the moment. So I had one, this was uh, in Adelaide, uh, probably been with this girl for a couple of months and it was going pretty well, but I, I don't think I was 110% into it. Mm. And we were watching a movie. She paused the movie, so mm. dead silence in the house. And it was a pretty pivotal part of the movie, so I was a bit annoyed. Mm. And she said, look, I've just got to say this. I love you. No. Which was lovely that she felt that way and said that. But at this point, I wasn't in love with her and I didn't love her and I didn't want to mislead her. So mm. maybe I was too honest. But mm. And then she left. No, I paused for a moment mm. and I wasn't going to say I love you. So I just said the first thing that came to mind, mm. I said, do you want an apple muesli bar? <laughs> because in the corner of my eye on the bench, I had this packet of, you know, the six pack of um, apple muesli bars. And I thought she might be hungry and it might sort of divert her attention from what we just happened and she said oh no thanks i'm i'm fine and then press play on the movie again <laughs> oh no and so that clearly that didn't work out no it didn't but we're friends mm. and um so you never fell in love with her but well, just, just, i don't just know whether you... she just didn't like apple as a flavor mm. or whether it was yeah we just i wasn't in love with her basically <laughs> Oh, can you see why I'm single? <laughs> I, I, I get lust confused with love. Yes. I go, oh my God, I want this girl so mm. bad. And then mm. all, I'm, I'm so in love with her. But And then after a few months, you'd realize, okay, that lusty thing's gone. Yes. And she's really fucking annoying. <laughs> I got to get the hell away from this bit. But, and then you realize it wasn't really love. And yeah. I, I think once I figured out those differences, like, I, and that was probably only in the last 10 years. Right. I, I started drifting away from telling people at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Sorry to anyone out there that actually thought we were in love who's watching this. <laughs> Can you name them in go, alphabetical you order? Uh, yeah. Anna, Barbara, <laughs> Kareen, <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> Dominique. <laughs> actually, oh, well, it, actually it was. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, man, I hope, I hope you... What, are you wrapping me up? You find someone and... Oh, no, no, I'm not, not wrapping you up. <laughs> You're wrapping up my love life. Can I ask you, mm. um, you used to do the voiceovers as well for Big Brother, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. So, can I, I... I never got to go on the show, but mm. I watched a lot of it. In fact, in the first season, I worked... I just got a job at Triple M. I just started radio. My first, I was like, I don't know, 19 Did, or something. Didn't you um, do a competition and you ended up winning a job as a co-host yes. on the radio? Yeah, Who yeah. Wants to Be a Co-host on Air? Yeah. I won that in Adelaide and the prize was to go to Edinburgh in Scotland, review acts in the Edinburgh Fringe, and oh. I came back and got offered a job. It was awesome. That's Great so way cool. to start. Yeah. But, but my first job, like kind of lackey job, was like cutting up audio of what had happened in the Big Brother house overnight ah. for the radio show <laughs> oh, to really? play on the Triple M breakfast show the next morning. Right. So Andy the Dominatrix. 
Banks, you know, yes. Sarah Marie. You won. The OG. Yeah, the original gangsters. Oh, it's 18 years ago. That's crazy. That was literally when I just started in media. I was like, I don't know, 18, 19. But my question was, oh, thank you very oh, much. Oh, yes, thank you. This is Brock back here. Thanks, Brock. Brock Obama. He's uh, <laughs> in charge of the drinks. Now this looks really bad if I have yes. two sitting there. Oh, so it's I'm only gonna... two. That's okay. You're not allowed to actually have beer in a broadcast facility. It's actually in the... Um, in, in, but really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the app. Is this a broadcast facility? As well. No, it's not. This is just like the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's just a there's normal no living of, room. There's no rules of drinking on the internet. <laughs> but there, there are actually rules in the... Um, I, I'm not sure what they call the actual... The, the Broadcasting Tribunal Act or whatever it is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when I was doing Big Brother Up Late... I can say it now! I used to have a beer at the back of the couch sometimes during the commercial break. Oh, I love like, that. You know you could just put it in a, a mug and no one would know what you're drinking. That would have been the clever thing. <laughs> a Big Brother branded mug. Um, but what I was going to ask was, um, could you bring it out of retirement, your um, Big Brother voiceover voice, and yeah. maybe, I don't know, narrate me? Like that, sure. that would be an honour. Like It's something that I've always thought. You really if, want me to do If that? I ever hang out with Mike, like I don't care if I look like an idiot. I'm going to ask him to narrate me as if I'm a Big Brother contestant. I can narrate you if you like. <laughs> this is great. So do you want me to do anything? or No, you, you can just do whatever comes right, naturally. Right, cool. um, and, and I'll just all right, all right. <clears throat> come back to the break. Actually, all right, hang on a sec. So do you want me the, the, um, the Big Brother narrator voice? Yeah. Or, or like I'm sitting on Big Brother up late talking about what the housemates are doing? Let's go narrator voice. Narrator, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it's 2 a.m. in the Big Brother house. Sam is in the backyard having a yender pale ale and realizing it's still dark outside. And he's wearing his sunnies. Oh, it's still dark outside. Why am I wearing my sunnies? <laughs> then he decides to take them off, put them down, and stare at his microphone lovingly and start to stroke it. <laughs> knowing that the other housemates are all asleep. We'd never get away with this on Channel 7. <laughs> that was so cool. That's all I need. Like Life goal complete. Thank you. <laughs> any, any time, sunshine. Do you, do Absolutely. you enjoy like slipping back into that mode? Is it fun? Is um, there like a sense of nostalgia to it? It, it is. I actually, I felt like I was on the show all over again. Yeah. You never know. I think the show should come back because it produces so much content. It does. And and, and, pumping and talking out, points. Constantly c pumping out information and things about housemates. And, I agree. 24-7. You know, and, yep. and because, you know, people are using the internet now more than ever. And you know what? It's made for it. I think that it had, even though there was a lot of, Dodgy moments, silly moments, you know, pointless moments, sexy moments, whatever. Mm. There were a lot of moments over the course of that show where I think it was really important. For example, having having Johnny the gay guy. Was that season one or two? Season one. Now, at that time, this might sound crazy to young people watching this, but there weren't a lot of gay people represented outwardly on TV. So... For a mainstream, broad Australian audience to see, oh, that Johnny bloke's a good dude. I thought, such yeah. a simple thing, but mm. I thought things like that happened on Big Brother over the years and lots of conversations yeah. came up and learning how to treat and how not to treat people and yeah. what's okay and what's not okay. So it really was that social experiment thing that the whole thing was designed with, with that 1984 mm. George Orwell. And people coming from all walks of life yes. all over Australia and people could sit there and hear people have a conversation mm. that you think, oh, maybe, maybe you can't talk about that kind of thing in public, but people talking about it and you can relate to them yes and and understand their point of view and and you'd be against that person's point of view and then you'd take it to work and you'd start talking to other people about it and that's sort of what got all the excitement about it when when we used to pick the housemates i say we i mean producers yeah i like to make out i'm a producer <laughs> and, and they would mark the housemates from one to five in terms of what they'd say whether or not they want them on the they oh, love sure. them or hate them yeah and we would never pick housemates that got a number five rating from everyone like the 10 producers or 20 producers oh, or whoever had to say yeah. you, because we want people who you'd be really opinionated over so you might think that person's awesome and gets five but i might think that person's an idiot and gets a one yeah that's, that's a perfect housemate but it makes you feel something it, it'll it'll make you go to work and say oh my god i love this person you talk yeah. to me I, go, I can't stand them yeah and you would talk about it it's boring if you just love them and oh, aren't they great and it's that classic thing of it's almost and then you become uh like a, a sporting event you're cheering for that person like that's your team you're mm. like i love that guy you know, or I hate that guy, or whatever it is, and then you're passionate about it, and that's right. You do talk about it, so I agree. It'd be awesome if it come back. Do you think it will come back? Uh, it's a very expensive show to yeah. make, yeah. Uh, particularly it, your salary. Experiment my salary. Thank you very much. Uh, Twenty four hours a day filming. Mm. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's a lot of cabling and cameras and two-way glass. That's why, I mean, shows like Love Island, which all the producers are working on that are all ex-Big Brother producers. Alex oh, Mabradikas, mm-hmm. he was the executive producer on Big Brother. I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and now Love Island. Yeah. Like, they're all working on that show. And, but they're shooting them overseas because in some cases it works out a hell of a lot cheaper. Right. I mean, they're using the uh, the Love Island house that the UK use as well. Ah, I see. And That's like in I'm a Celebrity. They use um, the like the the one that Aussie is done in in Africa is used yeah. by another couple yeah. of um, countries yeah. for theirs. And then the UK one is used mm. uh, the the Gold Coast one, don't they? Yeah, just makes it a hell of a lot yeah. cheaper. What, do you watch any reality TV? Yeah. What's your I, favorite show? I really enjoy like? reality TV. I actually worked on the first season of I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here. I was at yeah. Channel Ten still. And oh, um, that's right. Yeah, you had a little um, hosting role or something. I did. Yeah. I, so I went over there. I went to Africa a couple of weeks before it launched, yeah. this is season one, and did behind the scenes interviewing, you know, people who were going in and, and things like that. But then when I came back, I hosted something called Fallout Zone or Foz, which was along the lines of what you used to do with um, Big Brother Up Late. Oh, yeah. I would, it wasn't on TV, it was live online. Mm. And we would have a live feed of what was happening in the jungle and I would commentate it basically. Oh. I'd have guests come in. It was like a podcast, but with, you know, the pictures online. Yeah, cool. And it was so much fun. I really yeah. enjoyed it. It was along the lines of, I remember when you would be on and they'd be like asleep and right. you'd be like, well, we've got to fill the airtime. <laughs> like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do now? <laughs> yeah. what, did, what would you do? What was your kind of go-to when they were asleep? What would you just talk about voting or... Well, I I always push to have guests, but then for the first few years, I said, no way, we're not going to let you have guests. You, yeah. you can do this quiz. Yeah. Um, you can write some notes. And like, yeah. we didn't even have video packages the first yeah, year. Yeah, right. And I was literally left to sit there and talk. Amazing. And I just had to make stuff up. I remember, remember the show The Panel? Yeah. With Glenn yeah. Robbins. And, yeah, great show. Um, working Dog. Yeah, all the Working Dog guys. I remember one night, they played the highlights of my show and they were just pissing themselves going look at this poor guy he's just sitting there trying to figure out what the yeah, hell he's going but to that's do. why it was so awesome and that's why um it was hard to turn it off have you been watching um big brother up late i'm gonna take my hat off to the guy who does it. i think his name's mike goldman because who hosts, he, it? who hosts it because he's doing two hours of television live television a night with people who may well be asleep yeah, yeah. he's got yes. one camera and he you watch him, he doesn't, sort of feel, he doesn't miss doesn't a beat. It's not, you're not going, oh, God, what's he going to do? Nick? He just keeps on going What on. does he say? He talks, well, he talks, he takes calls, he does a bit of a competition, he goes back to the house. Has a, ah. well, I think we've got a bit of him. Ah. A bit of him um, if something yeah, happened, all right? I'm saying, what kind of a freak am I? All right, I feel a little bit weird talking about someone who's talking in their sleep. Yes, it's strange, I know. Ah. Now I'm talking to myself. You think you're weird? You think I'm weird? Let's get back to watching someone sleep. Because you kind of had this feeling of like, nothing's happening, but I feel that something might happen. And it's interesting just watching you negotiate your way through that. And I found that when I was doing that fallout zone thing, we had moments where for legal reasons, there'd be a conversation going on and they would cut away from that conversation just because, you know. They're talking about drugs, they're talking about alcohol, talking about other people that might've done something wrong That's right, and mentioning names because they think, um, and this is the first season, so mm. they've gone, they've done the elimination or whatever. They think they're completely off the air and, mm. you know, they, and they know they're wearing mics, but they're like, oh, we can talk about whatever. Yeah. So when that was happening, when I was hosting Fallout Zone, they would just cut to a shot of a waterfall. Mm. So I would have to commentate a waterfall. Sometimes I think the record was 14 minutes of just vision of a waterfall. No. So I would start talking about how, you know, like... TLC once taught us, you know, that you can't go chasing waterfalls. You know, you've just got to stick to the rivers and the lakes like you used to. And I've always found it as great life advice. And then just babbling about waterfalls. Yeah. But I enjoyed the challenge of it. And I'm yeah. sure, did you get a bit of a kick out of like when you like, well, oh, there's nothing here I'd to work with, have to come you've got to go for it. Stuff. Like yeah. we, we had this, uh, this, this segment that I would do where I'd go inside the person's brain <laughs> and, and, and say, let's, let's listen mm. to what Sam Mack is actually thinking. <laughs> Right now, mm. hmm. Gee, that Mike guy—he's—he's uh, he's not such a bad bloke after all. I like—I like being on this show. He's supplied beer, and he's our top bloke. Yeah. Uh, I wonder how he actually makes money. <laughs> Got a nice house. Does, what if he sells drugs or something? There must be some weird guy. This on. camera guy must be selling drugs. Yeah, <laughs> I, go, I go inside their their brains and you know all sorts of random stuff like yeah. that. To, to, but that's to fun try. though. I think yeah. that that I find that kind of mm. you know creativity and improvisation. I guess is is mm. really good fun. Like I la, last year or the year before, I started doing improv classes just for something you know oh, unique yeah, you to spend that? time. Um, ITS, which is in Sydney, mm. in. Um, 
They got a little set up there with Giant Dwarf and um, Red Fern. What kind of games did you play? I did Groundlings in the US. It was oh, super awesome. fun. You know, where Will yeah, Ferrell went. Yeah, that's hugely popular. Yeah, well, that's kind of where a lot of, it, a lot of the big names have come mm. from Groundlings, haven't they? Um, what challenges did you do? Uh, all sorts of games, but a lot of the kind of just the yes and philosophies. Like, yeah. you know, someone starts a story and then you just kind of add to the yes story and, and, and see and where Never it goes. Never say no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I did maybe like three levels of it. And yeah. if I wasn't doing this job, I would definitely continue doing it. Like, yeah. not, not necessarily for any to do live performances of it, yeah. but to just massage that skill and have that muscle of yeah, being just, able to just be improv yeah being able to say think yes and. out there like instead of down here yeah. um, should we do one now sure <laughs> a, a yes and yeah <laughs> okay uh, yeah I have to refresh my memory how it goes like so I make up a story and, and you say yes and we did this exactly then, yeah so do we want to have a topic for the story uh, Brock give us a topic <laughs> will you uh, well, what anyone from the audience and anyone, anyone the can audience? pick a topic uh, Brock what would you like? uh, up, up back there yeah what's the topic <laughs> Just behind that group of hot girls. Fishing, fishing, that's fishing. a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, so are we actually <laughs> pretending we're fishing or we're telling a story about the time we're fishing? We are fishing. Oh, we are fishing. Yeah, so, oh, so we're like, yeah, okay, let's go. Yeah, let's go so fishing. how much was your rod? Uh, oh, it was actually a Christmas present from, oh. from my auntie Susan. Oh, how is she? Yeah, yeah, she, oh, she's dead. Oh, but, yeah, I'm so she, sorry. Yeah, she, um, uh, she, she died of, in a bizarre fishing accident. Oh, no. Is this too soon for you to go fishing? Because we don't have to do fishing now if you don't no, want to. No, this is actually how, how the doctor said I have to deal with it. Oh, so you're so overcoming... It's, yeah, that's, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's helping, right. me, helping me deal with it. But I, re- I really just... I don't want to talk about Susan or the rod. I mean, I, I probably should have told you that. But I, I do really admire your rod. It's, it's so uh, big and long and shiny. What, this one? Yeah. Yeah, this is... Um, Very impressive. From my uncle Gavin. Oh, right. He died recently. Oh, no. How yeah. did he die? Uh, he died in a, a tractor accident. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Hang on, let me just unfurl it. Yeah. Wait! Oh, he's really got something. I got one! <laughs> Wait! What do you got there? Come on! Oh, I wonder if my fist is just out of shot and this looks like I'm doing something else. <laughs> oh, come on! Oh, yeah! What? It's, oh. It's a tiny little... It's a picture of Susan. Fish. That's weird. <laughs> it's a picture. That is so weird. It's a fishy picture of Susan. <laughs> that's so weird. It's, that's bizarre. What is Can it? Can I just, keep that picture? It's a of sign Susan? from God. <laughs> She's watching. We could go on for hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and no one would watch. <laughs> no, I, think, I think that was good. <laughs> well, I think people bought so into the fun. emotion of Susan. You know, cheers. Well done. Well done, man. And I think that's. I haven't done a yes end for years. There's no wrong answer in that. Is there? It's just go with it. Whatever. You've, you've just got to say yes. And did, did you ever play any other weird games in your improv classes? Like they have uh, chickens and goats. I didn't play that did one. That one, that one so went... We won't play that because not enough people. <laughs> <laughs> but what you do is like, it's about 20 people in the room. They all stand on stage and they've got to close their eyes. Yeah. And the, the instructor goes around and goes, you're a chicken, you're a goat, you're a chicken, you're a goat. And you have to just go and <laughs> and you have to within a certain amount of time find your group. I love it. <laughs> and just split up into your group. I love it. And everyone's feeling each other. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you met your lady? Yeah, that's yeah, how we met. Yeah, you were yeah. yeah, I was like, hey, baby. Yeah. Oh, we can be get, goats get, together. Get your hands off that thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah that what was the line again? Um, I want to suck your spit. Oh, it? yeah. I want to suck your spit. <laughs> yeah. No, no. She said, uh, I, I wish I didn't have to suck spit. <laughs> Even he's depressed. <laughs> I, I, I wish I didn't have to suck spit for a living because you're a dental yeah. nurse. And I said... I wish you'd suck my spit. <laughs> That's like a live feed of how the audience are feeling right now. What's it called? Is it the worm? When people are on, on, polit- on election night, the worm's like... Uh, Sorry about that. When they started the improv. <laughs> what, do you get into politics much? I mean, yeah, I, a lot I of people, it. you know, they're obviously it's koshy and everyone, they're talking about it every morning and they'll cross to you and you might be with a politician or someone. Yeah, we and- did um, We did a morning at, at um, Julie Bishop's office in Canberra, which was one of my favourite mornings. She oh, was really, really fun. Yeah, yeah, she was just... She's got that steely gaze mm. and that kind of... that Almost like RBF, right? bitch face yeah. like Coco but she was so lovely to deal with mm. and we played a game which I came up with called One Minute Ish with Jay Bish ah. and it involved her doing like a game show style <laughs> walk yeah. on so there was this great moment they, they were coming to us a bit early so my producer was like mm. oh Julie, can we just get you to hide behind that cardboard for a moment? So he's telling the Deputy Prime Minister to hide behind a little bit of cardboard because I wanted to do a game show style. Welcome, Jay Bish! No! <laughs> she did it and she was very funny and it was actually a really cool morning. Mm. I do enjoy politics. Mm. I've, um, my ex-girlfriend was in politics, so I know 
oh, yeah, quite a bit do? about it. Um, she was uh, running sort of in a local, you know, in New South local Wales. Local council yeah, stuff. But yeah, but she, she didn't make it. She didn't get voted in. But she, I just sort of... Through a lot of her work, she, I'm a big animal lover. She did, she did a lot of campaigning to try to improve things with animals. Yeah. And so she was trying to follow things that she was passionate about. And it's, it's a tough gig. And I feel for some politicians, they always get a bad rap, mm. all of them. But I think there's a few good eggs in there. Mm. And I don't think the good eggs are in you know office at the moment. And mm. I think we're a bit of an uh, international there's embarrassment. It's just the squabbling that goes yeah. on and the fact It becomes less about everyone, the country and yeah. more about them. Everyone's, and it has been for a while Everyone's now. fighting for power. Yeah. It's like, well, how can we get that guy out so that we've got more power? Like, yeah. oh, okay, there's a loophole in the, in the system where if, if his father was from another country, he might have yeah. a dual passport so yeah. we can kick him out. Like it happened to Barnaby Joyce. Yeah. I'm sure Barnaby's you know, been in a bit of trouble lately because, yeah, he has. you know, the relationship thing. But... He's so loved out in the regional areas mm-hmm. and they don't give a stuff. And and when he fixed up his citizenship thing, he came back with stronger, with more Did he? votes. I think it's 75% or really? something. Really? Like and Jackie Lambie's coming back and she's going to be doing the same thing. But just all that little crappy things. Yeah, They're I trying often, to get one up on each other. It's so annoying. I and, often think that um, the media cares more about a lot of those, you know, those disputes. The media the beats public, it up more, do you think? Than the public do. Yeah. I think the public will consume it because it's what's there. But I think the media... Keep shoving the microphone in their yeah, face. Yeah, let, let's and hang on to this story and stretch it out over seven weeks when really it could have been done in a few days. Yeah. So we're in the middle of... So a, blame us. A, it's us. Our fault. <laughs> uh, there's a by-election happening on the 20th of October here in mm. the, the electorate of Wentworth, mm-hmm. which we're in at the moment in the eastern suburbs. Do you live around here? Uh, yeah, Darlinghurst. So yeah. not not far. And, uh, and Karen Phelps is the independent who's running. And I, I met her this morning and had a chat to How her. Was that? It's, it's, it's on a Facebook Live. You can go and check oh, it out. Oh, cool. Yeah, she's really cool. She's a fascinating lady. I mean, she yeah. was the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor and she's the head of the uh, Australian Medical Association. Awesome. OAM, she's been on TV stuff. a lot as well, hasn't she? Done a lot of um, yeah. over the years, a lot of expert advice. And, and ScoMo, uh, the the prime minister at the moment, yeah. he was across the road only an hour ago at some little kids' school. Was he really with, with the local uh, liberal? Did you see him, guy running liberal? No, no, because we just started doing this show. We we missed it. But see, you're how do more you know important that then? Because there are all these people running. Do you just see this guy in news vans out the front and the <laughs> no. police cars no. and stuff like that? Yeah, you just are you just, doing improv again? Just, just chewing is, on is chewing improv? on your kebab. I swear to God, that is actually. <laughs> across the road well he's here because he wants to win this election so what you're saying is the prime minister is on your street but you're interviewing a tv weatherman that's right <laughs> that's all i, I care love about this show but he, no but the thing is the prime minister is going to be here pretty much for the next month because come october 20 if the liberal party don't win they lose the balance of power to an yeah, independent yeah. or Labor. yeah so he's going to be working all these streets. He has to. So he's you'll get, probably have him on the show a couple of times. Door knocking. <laughs> yeah. And and like just well, we were down on uh, Bondi Beach with uh, with Karen Phelps and like so many people coming up to her and saying, yeah. "Wow, we really love what you're doing." Oh, you know, that's good. You know, we're we're a big fan of yours and. So it's going to be a really interesting be. few weeks here for sure. You'll probably have to do a few crosses down here. I hope so. We can hang and, out, Mike. And um, speak to him. Definitely. Do you remember, um, do you know Mark Marin? The He has a very successful podcast. He's an uh, American comedian. He... Yeah, yeah, I heard him. He somehow, because huge numbers like downloading his show around the world, he managed to get Barack Obama on his podcast and he records his podcast in his garage at his house so Barack Obama's security detail came there like the week no. leading up to it. They had um, intelligence officers. They closed three streets. They scanned everything. He went into the garage, hung out for an hour and a half, no. did the podcast. It was brilliant. So uh, what I'm saying is if he can get Obama, you can get ScoMo. Maybe I should go and get Start Scomo. the campaign. He's working this area. I'm having FOMO about ScoMo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You've got a catchphrase and everything. I could sort that out. Sure. But then again, I, I was talking to the independent Karen Phelps this morning and, and I, I was you know sort of giving a bit of stick to her opponents trying to trying to fish her in to yeah. see, see if she'd get in a bit of a stoush going, yeah. oh you know the, the Liberal Party guy you know he uh, he was born in um, he was I think he was born in Canada right and uh, you know he's got his Indian heritage I mean yeah. should he check his background I'm like come on you're gonna go there and she goes no let's just stick to the subject let's just stick to the back <laughs> yeah. and I'm like okay fair enough so hopefully he, they, they might, I might have burnt my bridge there well you know? why don't you just extend the invitation to both yeah. of them you yeah. know you could fit another chair around here absolutely you'd have to lose a few of the studio audience members but i think it's possible would you ever get into politics i don't think so no. i love watching it as a spectator mm. um but it's a really hard gig and i don't think you get a lot of love mm. and you don't pe- people are out to stab you in the back all the time you're never yeah. really comfortable mm. um yeah it's I, I, look we think tv or media is yeah. bad like politics i think is another few levels absolutely my um my godfather who later became my stepdad 
That's a whole other story. Uh, he was a petrol politician for really? 30 years. Oh, my God. Yeah, and it's one of the toughest jobs. It would mate. be, yeah. And not, not just in the way that you've got, you know, pensioners ringing you up every day going, are they going to take my pension away? <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with my... You know? yeah. And, you know, dealing with people trying to get their families in from other countries. Yeah. And, I mean, that can be quite rewarding when, when it, it works out, but... The, the other side of it where you, you just have to go to like school fates, you yeah. have to go to school awards Fruit nights. factories. Yeah, you have to go to, you know, all these random events. Yeah. And, and that, but that's part of the job. And isn't it, isn't it challenging when you see the prime minister or wh- whichever politician it is mm. trying their best to pretend to be interested in how they manufacture the lids for Coke bottles? <laughs> like, oh, is that how you do it? <laughs> those, those tours of weird factories. Yeah. like Wearing those hairnet things. And then they go back to parliament and have a whole stack of fights <laughs> yeah. about stuff. And we end up yeah. with another prime minister. I'm like... What have we had? Seven in ten years? Yeah. We're the We're an international. Stock of the we world. really are. I mean, I love John Oliver. He's one of my favorite shows. Yeah. And we feature on there every week, which is not a good thing. We do. <laughs> We're on oh, whether it's week. about guns yeah. or it's about the Australian Parliament yeah. or, or something ridiculous going on. <laughs> How do you like working with the Sunrise crew? They're a good bunch. I love it. Um, you know, the thing that people don't realize is that I rarely see them. Um, oh, really? Because my job is predominantly travel. Mm. Um Last year, so I've been doing the job, the Sunrise Weather gig for, mm. this is my third year of it now. Yeah, well, cool. Yeah, last year I did 160 work-related flights. Wow. So you're constantly... Your frequent flyers yeah. must be awesome. Yeah, but then you get a holiday and you just want to stay at home and watch Netflix <laughs> <laughs> because you're like, I'm sick of being at the airport. I'm yeah. sick of driving. Um, but the team have been really good with me, really supportive, uh, particularly Koshi early on. I think mm. I'm an Adelaide guy. He's an Adelaide guy. He was very supportive mm. even when I was just filling in mm. in bits and pieces. Um, rarely do they say, don't do that or you can't do that honestly i could count on one hand the amount of times i've said that because that's cool they, we're, we're filling three and a half hours of show mm. a day it's a lot and not everything is going to work and not everything is going to be amazing but you've just got to keep batting it up and keep trying to kind of make what you can of whatever situation you're in you know if you're in um darwin and you've got a crowd of seven people mm. try to make the most of it mm. you know we're doing this thing at the moment australia a to z where mm. people can nominate for us to come to their towns yeah cool we just did g this week so geelong um picking it up next week we're doing a couple of days a week but it's been awesome hearing from all these people from all these places that i'd never even heard of some of them mm. there's only one town in australia that begins with the letter x and i think it's pronounced uh Xan- xantippe no and it's about four hours drive out of perth and 22 people live there so no, I think that would be an awesome morning to do the show. With all those 22 yeah, people. Yeah, well, we might get half of them. Who knows? But that's wouldn't so cool. that be great? Yeah. Uh, and that, that's the thing I like about the job. You, there's no real boundary in terms of idea. You can mm. pitch something and more often than not, even though I'm doing weather, mm. Mm. weather is one part of the job. It's really mm. kind of interviewing people, mm. visiting places, travel, doing entertainment you know last year i released a hit single with nikki webster strawberry, strawberry kisses, kisses 2017 I, I love what you did because obviously this strawberry drama yeah. with some idiots putting some needles in strawberries yeah. and so you've you've come out and I, this is perfect we can promote strawberries <laughs> and i can sell some more singles at the same time nikki webster get out of here yeah so we got that her. was great and you put an extra little rap in there I about did. supporting the farmers that's really right cool. i think it's important um that was an acoustic sam acoustic version and she was so um happy to be involved because she you know wanted to do her bit and she actually been contacted by literally 50 or 60 different people radio stations i think the deputy prime minister's office contacted to say can we use your song in this video that we're doing about it so her phone had been running hot you know she is the face of strawberries yeah you know 20 what 18 years ago almost that she released that song Mm. and um a bit of trivia a bit of music trivia it it only made it to number two in australia um it couldn't top shaggy it wasn't me (laughs) it's number one i'm a big shaggy fan yeah went to see him live that is a great song no not were i I am a big shaggy <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am a big Shaggy fan. No, I went to see him shaggy. live last year. He's still touring. He's still touring. Yeah, he played the Big Top Luna Park, and I bought a T-shirt, Shaggy, Shaggy's face on it, and all the tour dates on the back. There's only three, <laughs> but that's all right. And the best part about it was it was the most eclectic crowd you've ever seen in your life. Really, all different. People. You can't pick a Shaggy fan. Yeah, wow. you got people in their fifties. You got sixteen-year-old kids. It was a bit of everything. And I think that week there'd been a terror attack. Mm. And who do you turn to in times of trouble? Shaggy, Mr. Bombastic. Mm-hmm. So. He, he gets up on stage, does the first couple of songs, and then he says something like, he's like, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff happening in the world right now. And everyone's like, ooh, he's referring oh, to the terror attack that just happened. Mm. He goes, let me tell you, the worst thing that's going to happen tonight, when your girl's going to go get pregnant. <laughs> and everyone cheers. Yes, Shaggy, yes. And then he goes, 
And if that happens, I'll just say it wasn't me. <laughs> and then the song starts. I was like, whoa, that's art. Me. That is art. I love your songs. You, like you, you lately on your Instagram, you've been dressing in this eighties gear. Yeah, uh, I think you did it uh, at the uh, World Square. I did. Yeah, on, on the, the dragon. To the Huey Lewis uh, song, um, "Do You Believe in Love?" So cool. Great song. That was brilliant. And you, and you did a, another song uh, with your in, imaginary girlfriend, Chloe. Yeah, as well. Girls just want to have fun. Or what song? Uh, did you Walking use? on sunshine. Walking on sunshine. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Chloe, your imaginary girlfriend. Yeah. Have you got any other songs planned that you're going to be doing on uh, your well, Instagram? Because well, they're great. Thank you. Chloe and I split up. Um, she oh, was yeah. She was having an imaginary affair with her imaginary personal trainer, which you know, Rich. like you and Susan. I don't really want to sort of go into it too much, but so, um, rest Susan's soul. But. I think that they're just fun and that's what I love about Instagram. That's what I love about what you're doing here. Like you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. There's no rules and I think that resonates with people because mm. often, you know, in a professional or a commercial sense, understandably, there's things that have to be done, there's boxes that have to be ticked. But mm. you can put anything you want out there. I can do any song I want and there's no rules except for potentially copyright infringement. But um, yeah, how'd you get away with that? <laughs> I don't know. Have I got away with it? I don't know. Yeah. Don't go to my Instagram page. And would you ever like record any songs on the guitar or release something? Well, something I'm thinking of Maybe doing. A comedy album? Um, I don't know. Like, I love, like, it's one of my favorite hobbies. Mm. I see you've got a few guitars around as well. Yeah. Don't you find that it's one of the can't most relaxing things? They look cool. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the studio audience who are holding them. Um, don't you find that it's one of the nicest ways to relax yeah i love that on a friday getting mm. home having a beer butchering a few songs like today i was playing um dancing in the moonlight by top loader oh nice yeah very catchy song i just went onto google found the chords bang what's your go-to song people go play us a song you go okay and, and you know in the back of your mind oh. uh, what do you want to hear i know i'll do this one and, and, and you just do one that you know that you nail every single time what's that song i don't think i nail any of them every oh. single time but i yeah I, here we go i do enjoy um you know Lady in Red is a great song. Lady in yeah, Red. Yeah, Chris you do the, like acoustic on the guitar. Yeah, I've done that a few times. I enjoy I enjoy playing with songs you wouldn't normally do on a guitar, like a Shaggy song. Like I've done um, Angel by Shaggy a few times. Uh, cool. Yeah, what do, we, what do you play? Uh, mostly originals. Actually, I could play one of mine and you could play one of yours. I found my guitar. How lucky. <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, I won't play the whole thing because it's ridiculous. I'm and, excited. Uh, here we go. My head stuck out a window, staring at the stars. I'm listening to Bowie's Life on Mars. I'm wondering what could be out there. Take me away on a holiday. Take take me away on a holiday. Aliens, two SPOs, aliens, cut up my car. <laughs> <laughs> and then it has this weird breakdown bit where it goes. It's like a guy being hypnotized. Yeah. And the, the doctor's saying. You are now hypnotized and under my spell. Tell me exactly what happened. You sound like Sean Connery. Bit. <laughs> uh, oh well, the aliens, they sucked me up the ship, they stuck a big probe up my ass, and then they started to cut up my cock. No! <laughs> aliens, two best videos, aliens, cut my cock. Anyway. So it's going to be on a children's album. Yes. <laughs> Kids track, obviously. Yeah. I love it. It's catchy. Your, your turn. <laughs> uh, maybe you should do something commercial. So I just Something we know. know. The bit when it's like, ooh, ooh, is that the guy reacting to the aliens? Like, ah, ah. Yeah, so that's in surgery. Yeah, uh, that's, the, that's what I was thinking when I wrote it. I like it. It's it's very good fun. Can we find it? Can we hear it somewhere? You, is there you, a recording that we could... Ab absolutely. I'll put it in the comments section so people could download it for free. Brilliant. Love it. With I, this, what I, are you going to play? I will do that. It'll be on my gym playlist. Um... I'm going to do, uh, well, one of the great philosophers of our time, um, Miley Cyrus. Oh, beautiful. With uh, Party in the USA. But the version that I do is imagine um, a dad trying to be cool to his teenage daughter and her friends. So imagine like, you know, a group of 15, 16 year old girls having a pool party. Dad comes out and he's like, hey guys, I'm going to play you a tune. So that's the kind of vibe. <laughs> that's your vibe. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that, vibe. it works. It makes yeah. sense. <clears throat> I hopped off the plane at LAX with a dream in my cardigan Welcome to the land of fame and excess, uh, am I gonna fit in? Jumped in the cab, here I am for the first time Look to my right and I see the Hollywood sign This is all so crazy, everybody seems so famous my tummy's turning and I'm feeling kind of homesick Too much pressure and I'm nervous That's when the taxi man turned on the radio And a Jay-Z song was on A Jay-Z song was on 
a Jay-Z song was on. Come on. So I put my hands up to play my song. The butterfly fly away. Flag. Not in my head like, yeah. Flag. Moving my hips like, yeah. I got my hands up to play my song. I know I'm gonna be okay. Goldman. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Party in the USA. Hey, yeah, yeah. There's a party in the USA. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Yes. <laughs> I missed my cue, so <laughs> I was like, flag, flag. I couldn't actually um, stop to point because I was playing the song. <laughs> Sam Mack, flag. brilliant song. Thank you for being on the mic. You're amazing. What an honor. Thank you. <laughs> we rocked it. Was this in your top 80 episodes? Oh, mate, definitely in the top 100. <laughs> top, top end of the one. So many memories. 100.